Hi there, I'm Dave from MPI. Today, I'm going to be giving you an in-depth walkthrough of the features included in the Exodyme G3. Today's video will cover what comes in the box with your new G3, powering on the unit, charging the G3, how to change the date and time settings, how to conduct a sale and a return, how to reprint receipts, the store and forward feature, reporting, and a deeper look into each type of report, batching out, and finally powering off. There are timestamps in the description if you'd like to jump to a specific section. When you receive your new Exodyme G3, it will include the G3 unit itself, the charging cable, and a roll of receipt paper. To power on the Exodyme G3, you simply hold down the power button for about two seconds until the screen lights up. Charging the G3 device is extremely simple. All you need to do is plug the provided charging cable into the port located at the top of the card swipe slot. A great addition to the G3 is the available charging cradle. The unit sits on the cradle to charge and is easily removable. The provided charging cable plugs into the back of the cradle and can be locked into place. This accessory keeps the charging cord from being damaged and gives the unit a secure place to sit while keeping any point of sale area looking neat and tidy. If at any time you need to return to the main menu, click the red cancel button on the bottom left hand corner of the keypad until you end up back on the main menu screen. Use the arrow keys on the bottom left and right hand corners of the keypad to scroll up and down. To change the date and time on the G3, scroll down using the down arrow key on the bottom right hand side of the keypad. Tap the admin icon on the touchscreen, press 5 on the keypad to select system. Then press 4 on the keypad to select date and time. The yellow clear button acts as a backspace button if a mistake is made. Then enter the date using the keypad. The date format will be a four-digit year, two-digit month, and two-digit day. The time will be a 24-hour or military time format. Two digits for the hour, followed by two digits for the minutes. Press the green enter key to confirm. To conduct a sale, first tap the credit icon from the main menu on the touchscreen. Then press 1 on the keypad to select sale, Slash purchase. Then manually enter the price of the sale and press enter on the keypad. Then either swipe, insert, or tap the customer's card. Once the transaction is complete, the G3 will print a receipt. You will have the option to print a customer copy of the receipt if they would like one. Simply select yes or no when prompted by the G3. To conduct a return, first tap the credit icon from the main menu on the touchscreen. Then press 2 on the keypad to select return. Then manually enter the amount to be returned and press enter on the keypad. Then either swipe, insert, or tap the customer's card. Once the transaction is complete, the G3 will print a receipt. You will have the option to print a customer copy of the receipt if they would like one. Simply select yes or no when prompted by the G3. To reprint a receipt from a previous transaction, select reprint by tapping the printer icon on the touchscreen. After tapping the icon, you will be able to choose between printing the last receipt or by transaction ID. To reprint the last receipt, press 1 on the keypad and the receipt will be printed. To reprint by transaction ID, press 2 on the keypad. You will then need to enter the transaction ID and press the green enter button. The receipt will then be printed. The store and forward feature allows you to accept payment even when you don't have an internet connection. The G3 stores the credit card details and then forwards the transaction once the connection is regained. There are some issues to worry about when using the store and forward feature. First off, since it's a swipe transaction, if the customer disputes the charge, you automatically lose the transaction. Also, there's no way of knowing if the transaction was declined until you regain an internet connection. To use the store feature, tap on the S and F icon on the main menu touchscreen. 
Press 1 on the keypad to select Store. Swipe the card, then enter the amount to be charged. After pressing Enter, the transaction will be stored. Cards must be swiped to use the Store function. You will have the option to print a customer copy of the receipt if they would like one. Simply select yes or no when prompted by the G3. To forward the transaction or transactions you have stored once you have regained connection, select the SNF icon on the main menu touchscreen, then press 2 on the keypad to select forward. To forward all of the transactions that were stored, press 1 on the keypad. To forward a specific transaction, press 2 on the keypad to select forward 1. You will then enter the transaction ID and press the green enter button on the keypad. You will have to pr press enter one more time to verify. The single transaction will now have been forwarded. To forward a declined transaction in hopes of it going through after a certain period of time, press 3 from the forward menu. And press the green enter button on the keypad. When it comes to reporting, there are a few different options available. To access the reporting menu, scroll down on the main menu using the down arrow key on the bottom right hand corner of the keypad, then tap on the end of day icon on the touchscreen. Press 2 on the keypad to select the report menu. You will then have a choice between a variety of report types. I will run through how to use the various reporting types now. A batch report will show all of the transaction info for the current batch. The store and forward report function gives you the information associated with the pending or declined transactions that have been stored while there was no connection. A history report will tell you what you have batched out for a selected time period or batch number. A detailed report will give you the most information about the transactions within the batch. This info includes date and time, transaction type, transaction ID, card type, whether it was tapped, swiped, or a chip was used, the last four digits of the card, and the amount charged or returned. It will also include the grand totals at the end of the report. This detailed report can be grouped by date and time, payment type, card type, transaction type, or clerk slash server. Simply press the corresponding number on the keypad to choose how to group it. A condensed report will give you a less detailed report. It will include transaction number, card type, the final four digits of the card, the transaction type, and the amount of the transaction. All of these titles will be abbreviated. It will also show the grand totals at the end of the report. This condensed report can be grouped by date and time, payment type, card type, transaction type, or clerk slash server. Simply press the corresponding number on the keypad to choose how to group it. After selecting the grouping type, it will automatically print the report. A totals only report will give you the totals of each type of transaction based on date and time or however you choose to categorize them. It will also give you the grand totals for, for all transactions. This is obviously the least detailed of the report types. This totals only report can be grouped by date and time, payment type, card type, transaction type, or clerk slash server. Simply press the corresponding number on the keypad to choose how to group it. After selecting the grouping type, it will automatically print the report. To create a batch report, use the down arrow key on the bottom right hand corner of the keypad to scroll down in the main menu. Tap the end of day icon on the touch screen. Press 2 on the keypad to select report menu. Press 1 on the keypad to select a batch report. Choose your batch report type by pressing 1 for a detailed, 2 for a condensed, or 3 for a totals only report. For more information on the differences between these report types, look back in this video to where they were broken down. After selecting one of the three report types, you can choose how to group the transactions within the report. They can be grouped by date and time, payment type, card type, transaction type, or clerk slash server. Press 1, 2, 3, 4, or 5 on the keypad to choose. After selecting the grouping type, the report will be printed. To create a store and forward report, scroll down in the main menu using the down arrow key in the bottom right hand corner of the keypad and tap the end of day icon. Press 2 on the keypad to select the report menu. Press 2 to select SNF report. Then choose between an SNF pending or decline report. The pending report will outline the stored transactions that are yet to be forwarded. The decline report will outline the information associated with any stored tra transactions that were declined. Choose your store and forward report type by pressing 1 for a detailed, 2 for a condensed, or 3 for a totals only report.
For more information on the differences between these report types, look back in this video to where they were broken down. After selecting one of the three report types, you can choose how to group the transactions within the report. They can be grouped by date and time, payment type, card type, transaction type, or clerk slash server. Press 1, 2, 3, 4, or 5 on the keypad to choose. After selecting the grouping type, the report will be printed. To create a history report, use the down arrow key on the bottom right hand corner of the keypad to scroll down in the main menu. Tap the end of day icon on the touchscreen. Press 2 on the keypad to select report menu. Press 3 on the keypad to select a history report. Choose your history report type by pressing 1 for a detailed, 2 for a condensed, or 3 for a totals only report. For more information on the differences between these report types, look back in this video to where they were broken down. After selecting between a detailed, condensed, or totals only report, you will be able to choose to create the history report for a selected date range or by batch number. Press 1 on the keypad to select by date, then enter the starting date of the selected time period using the keypad. Press the green enter key. Then, enter the end date by using the keypad. Press the green enter button and the report will print. To create a history report, use the down arrow key on the bottom right hand corner of the keypad to scroll down in the main menu. Tap the end of day icon on the touchscreen. Press 2 on the keypad to select report menu. Press 3 on the keypad to select a history report. Choose your history report type by pressing 1 for a detailed, 2 for a condensed, or 3 for a totals only report. For more information on the differences between these report types, look back in this video to where they were broken down. After selecting between a detailed, condensed, or totals only report, you will be able to choose to create the history report for a selected date range or by batch number. To create a history report by batch, press 2 on the keypad. Then, enter the batch number and press the green enter key. Then, select how you would like the report to be grouped. After you select grouping type, the report will be printed. To batch out, scroll down on the main menu using the down arrow key on the bottom right hand corner of the keypad. Select the end of day icon by tapping on it on the touchscreen. Press 1 on the keypad to select settlement. You will be asked on screen if you want to print report. Click the green enter key on the bottom right hand corner of the keypad. Another window will pop up on screen asking you to confirm settlement. Once again, press the green enter key. The G3 will show batch approved and the batch number. Press the green enter key again. When it shows the batch has been released, you know the process is complete. The G3 will automatically go back to the end of day menu. Press the red cancel button on the bottom left hand side twice to return to the main menu. To turn off the unit, press and release the power button, then press the green enter key in the bottom right hand corner of the keypad. I hope this video has answered any questions you might have had about the Exodyme G3. For more videos like this one, subscribe to the MPI YouTube channel. To purchase an Exodyme G3, go to mpipos.com. Thanks for watching.